All right. Uh, last, last week, we shared from Psalms 91, and we talked about abiding under his shadow. And as I began to pray about this message, uh, I just come, kept coming back to the shadow, coming back to the shadow. So we're going to talk a little about tonight about the shadow of healing. You know, in Psalms 23, it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And we talked last week about casting a shadow. And the only way there can be a shadow cast, there has to be some, some light. And so I want us to cast a long shadow. I want our, our life to exemplify, personify Jesus Christ. And I want people to meet him and to know him and to grow in him and love him so much they want to go and tell everybody about it. How many of you, uh, Janet, I had the privilege of taking Janet to the, to the mall the other day. She just ran in. She's really a slow runner. But anyway, she came out and she said, hey, you want to come in? They have some shirts on sale. You know, those shirts you like, uh, they're really expensive shirts. I never pay that kind of price for them. She said, and they're, they're really marked down. I said, no, I really don't want to look. Uh, but if you find a really good deal like Janet, and she's a shopper, she is a shopper rama mama. Uh, she gets excited about finding a good deal. How many of you get excited about a good deal? Well, everybody's excited about a good deal. That's why we've got to take this gospel to the world because it's free. <laughs> it's free. Now, it wasn't free for Jesus, but it's free for us. And so tonight we're going to talk a little bit about that, and we're going to talk about the shadow of healing. So let me ask you just one question tonight, and since it's spring break, I don't have to hurry. <laughs> they're, having a, they're having a big spring break shindig over there, a hoot nanny. Uh, over at TNT, they're cooking and eating. And I, I didn't want to announce that until I started preaching so y'all didn't all get up and go over there. So there's no real hurry for me tonight, is there? Because it's never stopped you from getting up and leaving before I'm finished anyway. So let me just ask you just one simple question instead of three like a lot of times I do. What role does faith play in our Christianity? What role does faith play in our relationship with God? Wait a minute, that's two questions. Same one. So we're going to dig into this a little bit. And I'm just going to tell you, I've already edited half of this message, and I've pushed it into my next time. So I'm going to share with you the best half. You can come back next time, you get the rest half. All right, so here it is. Mark 6, 1, what road does faith play, and I hate to use the word faith and play in the same, in the same sentence, but what role does, what does faith have in our lives as Christians? Faith. I'm not talking about believing. I'm not talking about mental assent, acknowledging the Bible's real and the Bible's true. That's mental assent. I'm talking about what role does faith have? What role does faith play? And I'm going to lay it out here. Mark chapter 6, verse 1, let's look at the example of Jesus. And he went out from there and came into his own country, and his disciples followed him. They say, if you think you're a leader, all you have to do is turn around and see if anybody's following you. If not, you're not a leader. You're just on a lonely walk. He had people following him. And as disciples, they emulated him. Matter of fact, Ephesians in one translation says, Be ye therefore imitators of God. WWJD, we ought to be like Jesus. Amen? Is that true? All right, so, and when he went from there, came into his own country, his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath day was come, look at what Jesus did. This is that model that we see in his, in his life, in his earthly ministry. And I want to emphasize again, he ascended into heaven 40 days after his, his death and resurrection. He ascended into heaven 40 days later, Acts chapter 1. And he sat down at God's right hand in heavenly places. And he is still in the ministry. He's still in the ministry. It's called the present day ministry of Jesus Christ. Raise your right hand. Say, I'm his ministry. You're, you're in his ministry. You are seated with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And from that position of just as if I'd never sinned, now we walk out this life of faith doing what Jesus would do. And that's what my intent to show you tonight is. It's in this shadow of healing. Let's look at the example of Jesus. What does he so frequently, almost always, you find him doing this when he draws a crowd? 
He teaches them. It's such a simple principle that some of you probably by now think this is redundant or repetitive for me to say it again. But faith comes by hearing, not one time, that can be a seed, but faith comes by hearing and hearing. And if you go back to the original text, it's really repetitive. Hearing and hearing and hearing the Word of God. So he began to teach, and many hearing him were astonished. That's kind of like y'all here at church. When I, <laughs> And many hearing him were astonished. Now let me talk about the rest of you now. Saying, from where did he get these things? And what wisdom has it given, uh, that's been given to him? That even such mighty works are wrought by his hands. Now watch the flip. That sound, if I stop right there, you say, praise the Lord. Isn't that awesome? They're, they're just absolutely, completely impressed with the life and ministry of Jesus. Wouldn't you agree? Well, let's keep reading, though. Is not this the carpenter? They immediately slip off into what I will refer to now as religious denial. Our present-day 2022 Christianity. They immediately go from, wow, what great words, what great wisdom, what great power. But, isn't this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James? And uh, it, that's, that's Jesus. Remember, he, we saw him grow up. Matter of fact, there was a time that dad went over there to his shop and he actually made something for the oxen. Isn't this the carpenter? They immediately went from, wow... This is a world changer, a life changer to, to the natural. And they were offended at him. Now, let's go back just to verse 2. From where has this man got these things? They were astonished at his teaching. And what wisdom is this that's been given to him that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? And yet, just like that, they're offended. That's never happened to you, has it? Has it? But Jesus said to them, a prophet is, I don't know how he knew they were offended, but he knew they were offended. It doesn't say how he knew. I don't know if that's a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom, one of the nine gifts of the Spirit, revealing that to him, the gift of discerning of spirits. I don't know. It doesn't say. But it says he immediately looks at them and he says, hey, you know, a prophet's without honor except in his own country, among his own kin, and his own house. How many of you have found it's sometimes very difficult to communicate these great, wonderful things about Jesus Christ to those in your family who don't know him? Yeah. See, if you grew up with me and knew my life B.C., before Christ, it would make it more challenging for some who don't understand the the blood of Jesus and the power of God to go, what in the world is Perry Black doing up on that stage? But if you understand that, it wouldn't be quite as difficult. But trying to share, you know, share with your brother that you used to have to punch in the nose on a Saturday when you was out wrestling in the yard. Or your sister who thinks she's your boss got you up in a corner, up, off, up in the foyer off the living room, you know, Shut up! You're not my boss! Whack! You're not, you're just, you shut up! A little bit harder. And that's kind of what they're doing. They immediately went from wow to now. They went from the supernatural woo, to the natural. This is Jesus. We know him. No, they didn't. They just thought they did. And there it says, uh, a prophet's not without honor except in his own country, among his own kin, in his own house, and he could there be, could there do no mighty work. Hi, I'm Perry Black right here at Arkansas Christian Academy. Are you looking for a private Christian school for your children? Listen, Arkansas Christian Academy is fully accredited. We have football, basketball, volleyball, golf, and baseball, IT, and broadcasting. One of the best kept secrets right here in Saline County, a school of lives worth to drive. Contact us because open enrollment begins March 1st, 2022. We look forward to hearing from you. Now, wait a minute. I thought in verse number three, 
they were really impressed that there were so many mighty works being done by him. But see, they immediately reduced him to humanity, to just Jesus, the carpenter, not the prophet. And he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folks. The original Greek actually indicates they were just sickly. How many know there's a difference between sickly and sick? He could there do no mighty work, save he laid his hands upon a few sick folks and healed them. And look what Jesus, now this is the guys that are so impressed by him and these mighty works that they're, that they're hearing about what he's doing, these great words of wisdom. And he marveled because of their unbelief. So what did he do in the midst of this unbelief? What did Jesus do? He started teaching and he ends with, and he went around about the villages doing what? Teaching. Because the only solution to the junk in your trunk is not another pop psychology Christian sermon. It's teaching the Word of God because faith comes by hearing the Word of God. It is so simple. You say, Pastor, we've heard you say this for 31 years. Then how is it working for you? See, it don't matter that you've heard it. It only matters if you receive the word and let it take root and it starts growing and bearing fruit where you quit thinking, I'm the one supposed to be doing all the daggum work. Now, what is the work I'm talking about? I'm not even talking about I serve. What I'm talking about is the work of the ministry, which is what? Sharing the gospel, laying hands on the sick, casting out devils. That's the work of the body of Christ. And you will not do it if you walk in unbelief. You can still get to heaven because you got saved. But see, the key, how many of y'all are going to heaven? How many of y'all going right now? (laughs) How how many of you are going to heaven? So are we going alone? No. We ought to be packing the house. Why? Not inviting people just to come to church to hear the best preacher on the platform tonight. I'm the only one up here. I'm humble and proud to say it. But, but that we're supposed to be sharing our faith everywhere we go. I have someone, I have someone who is a major supporter, one of our, what we would call one of our major supporters of Second Chance Ranch. And you know why they support the ranch? The reason, one of the reasons they gave me, face-to-face told me, said, because we know someone who goes to your church, and we know what they were like before they started going, and we've seen the transformation of Jesus Christ in their lives, and we respect that, and that's why we respect what you're doing, and that's why we support what you're doing. See, because, yeah, because it's gone from the pew to a U, E-W-E, to the streets. It's in the marketplace. And that's why what we do tonight must not stop with a hearing of it. Because he that only hears it and doesn't do it deceives himself. And the purpose of you being here tonight is for you to hear the word, believe the word, and then take it as it's being developed in you and take it out here to the people we meet every day. Every day. And I'll say it again. If you know anything, you know more than somebody who knows nothing. Now, that's pretty simple. But, you know, the lost don't know what you know. They've not heard these stories. They've not heard my funny, funny, funny jokes. (laughs) And he marveled because of their unbelief, and he went around about the villages teaching. That's what he did. He taught, and he taught, and he taught. And if you will... I, don't, I really don't know. I asked somebody this morning, we were talking, and I said, are you familiar with this major ministry? Now, this is an international ministry, so I'm not, not even aware who they are. So maybe you're not aware that ministries and ministers are under attack nonstop, 24-7, because if the devil can destroy the leader, it ripples throughout others. And here's what happens. I've seen this in my plus many, many years of ministry. Well, golly, if he can't, if he can't live for God, how can I? And it's collateral damage, and it's like a ripple effect. 
we need to make sure that we are growing in faith. We must never stagnate. We must never take for granted what we have. Now, I'm not talking about family, church, and me. I'm talking about what we have in Christ. We must stay so grounded and so rooted in Him that there is nothing that can shake us from our faith in the faithfulness of God. And that means you've got to stay in the faith. And you've got to stay in the study of the Word and in the presence of God and in the fellowship of people of like faith who encourage you, who lift you up. And that means you've got to feed your faith all the time. All the time. He marveled because of their unbelief. And he couldn't do a mighty work there. He only healed a few sickly people. Now, let me just kind of cut an overview. In, I believe it's Luke chapter 5, Jesus comes to a place we refer to as the Pool of Bethesda. There were sick people all around the pool. One man got healed. We've got to get beyond this belief that, you know what, well, I'm going to tell you, if God wanted people healed today, then how come, how come you just don't leave the church and go down to the hospital and just pray for everybody in every room and why didn't answer everybody healed? Jesus didn't even do that. But everybody that came to him to get healed got healed if they came in faith. Now, let's look at Mark 16. We're talking a little bit here about the shadow of healing. We'll get there. And we're talking about the importance of faith. We're going to spend some time here because what I'm dealing with nonstop, 24-7, are people who love Jesus who are struggling with health issues, whether it's mental health or physical health or marital health or financial health. They're dealing with health issues. And so we need to know how to believe God and how to receive, not just for ourselves, but so that we can give this away. Same way we got it free. So he marveled at our unbelief, Mark 16, 14. Later, now Jesus is, is risen. They, some have seen him risen from the dead. And Jesus appeared to the eleven as they were eating, and he rebuked them. Now, these are the guys that we revere, you know, St. John, St. Mark, St. Peter. He rebuked them for their lack of faith, and listen to this next phrase, and their stubborn refusal to believe. The, the apostles? He rebuked them for their stubborn refusal to believe those who had seen him even after he had risen. He rebuked them. How many of you would like a rebuke tonight? <laughs> yeah, let, praise the Lord, honey. Let's go to church and let's get rebuked. <laughs> Most of us don't really like rebukes. <laughs> we take it personal. That's the way it's always intended. <laughs> now watch this. Romans 14. And he that doubts is damned if he eats because he eats not of faith. For whatever is not of faith is sin. So what's the solution to sin? What's the solution to this lust of the flesh, this lust of the eye, this pride of life? 1 John chapter 2 talks about this. This is what controls everything. Whatever's not a faith is sin. All right, so let me ask you a question. Is doubting God faith? Then what is it? All right, let's just stop a moment and back up. <laughs> what did Adam and Eve do in a garden? They doubted. We make it about what they did. Now, what they did was a result of what they did in this area right here. They doubted. Hi, I'm Perry Black right here at Second Chance Youth Ranch TV on Victory Television Network. And I'd like to invite you personally to join us every Thursday night at 11 p.m. as we look at the need for fostering, adoption, and mentoring. And what a great opportunity you have to join us every Thursday night at 11 p.m. right here on Victory Television Network. And I look forward to seeing you. So let me just go kind of traditional Christianity for a minute. 
when we've been told both in our curriculum and in our, in our sermons and in our conversations that God made you sick to teach you something, how can I then, how do I then determine if that's what I believe? Is this sickness of God because he loves me and he's teaching me something? Or is this sickness of the devil and I need to believe God to heal me? Let me simplify for you. Every good and perfect gift comes from heaven, comes from God. In him there is no shadow or variable of turning. He is good, and he's good all the time. And if it ain't good, it ain't God. Ta-da, ta-da. I'm going to give myself a hand. <laughs> Cancer is not of God. AIDS, HIV, is not of God. COVID is not of God. Sickness is not of God. Sin is not of God. It's, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. Let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, because he that wavereth is like those, the, those waves in the sea and shall receive nothing from the Lord. So I need faith. Well, how can I have faith if I still think that God's trying to kill me? <laughs> and how can I have faith in God if I think He's the reason I've got what I got or don't have what I need? He withholds no good thing from those who walk uprightly. So I take it kind of personal. How many of you, I'm not saying your dad was perfect, but you love your dad. And if I started, I could talk about my dad and my life and how squirrely I was, and I was a little nut. But if I started talking about your dad, you would get offended. Well, then don't talk about mine unless you're going to build him up and, and be honest and factual about him. Your enemy, say my enemy, the devil. Can I say any more? Should I say any less? Your enemy, the devil, walks around like as a roaring lion. Seeking whom he may devour, whom you are to resist steadfast, how? In the faith. All right, so I've already figured out my enemy's the devil. I didn't have to think about that. I didn't have to meditate on it. I didn't have to pray about it. The Bible told me who my enemy is. That's why I believe, as, as transparent as I can tell you, my life is successful because I actually believe what I tell you. I actually believe what God says. Now, when I see something that God says and I don't understand what it is, you know what I go with every time? What God says. All right. And so now we've kind of seen the example of Jesus and the importance of faith. Simplified. What, what, is, what is faith? To me, faith is believing there is a God. Faith is then believing in God. Faith is believing in the faithfulness of God. Faith is receiving what this faithful God has given to me freely. And I receive it by faith. For by grace are you saved through faith, not of works. So Jesus has kind of laid it out. The scriptures have laid it out. And in Acts chapter 5, verse 12. The power of the shadow, and I call this faith in action. Watch this. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. Now, I, let me just stop right here and insert this, because it's not in the notes. It's in my next message and in my previous message. It really caught my attention in Luke chapter 10. The disciples had been out in ministry, and they came back rejoicing, and they said, Jesus... Even demons are subject to us in your name. Now, what caught my attention is they were shocked at the power of God that was available and operating through their ministry and through their lives. So I went, why would they be shocked? Well, let's put it in context. In Luke chapter 10, he sent out 70. Luke chapter 9, he sent out the 12. It didn't say the 12 came back surprised and amazed. The 70 did. 
So they exalt, they, so they're, they're lifting up the apostles, make a big deal about it. And it says, so no man joined with them, but, they, but the people still magnified them. And believers were more added to the Lord, multitudes, both men and women. Wow. How come? Why were so many people by multitudes being added to the church? Because through the apostles were many signs and wonders. Not because they were famous, but because miracles happened. What's the difference between the present day church and some temple somewhere some shrine, some mosque. Not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. What should be the distinguishing factor of the local church? Signs, wonders, and miracles. God confirming, not me, not you, God confirming His Word. Insomuch they brought forth the sick and laid them in the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the least that just Peter's shadow passing by might overshadow some of them. Wouldn't that be the weirdest thing if while I'm preaching, three sick people got up here and laid right here? It'd even bother me. Security would be like, what the? <laughs> and I'm like, what are y'all doing? We're getting our healing. Why are you getting your healing? Because it's your shadow. Would my shadow heal anybody? No, but their faith in Jesus Christ would. Because over and over again, not only did it happen back then, I've seen it happen in my own life and ministry. Look at that. The power of a shadow. What is wrong with these people? I, I, I kind of tried to look in the Bible to see if I could find some scriptural precedent that would justify them putting people out in the street just praying that just if, if Peter's shadow could just fall on me I'd get healed girl if I can get you up there if Peter just walks by his shadow get on you you're gonna get healed folks that's the tangible presence of Almighty God that resides on his people and upon his servants Man, I want to see people well <laughs> 